Then we can start. So thank you very much for joining. Usually, I really like this uh, se this uh, session schedule. So this is the last in the, in this conference, which was very good for me. Hope for you as well. And you know that's usually in the, in that time the conference is almost empty. Everybody just usually go to the airport. So thank you to join. And it's almost like a verse of feather session, right? So feel free to ask anything if you have any any uh, question. I can see the chat window during the presentation. So what we are talking about Kubernetes and Apache Big Data or cloud native environment and Apache Big Data. And I did multiple presentation about similar topics, but this is a, a, a different a, a little because what I would like to talk is usability and collaboration. And I know that it sounds very abstract or theoretical, but I promise that I will have demo and uh, exact code and exact solution. But I also would like to talk about uh, what are important for, for running Apache Big Data projects in, in Kubernetes. So my name is Martin Alec. I'm a Hadoop and Redis BMC, and I'm working for Cloudera. And most of the time, I'm working from Apache Hadoop Boson. If you don't know what is it, there was a, a separated session, and and you can check it from the archive. And Apache Hadoop Boson is a new object store for the Hadoop ecosystem, and. It, it's a new one, so I would like to test it everywhere with, with any of the uh, other big data projects. I would like to test storage and Flink, storage and st storage and Spark, Hive, HBase, everything. So what I need is some environment where I can very quickly install multiple Apache big data projects. And for me, this is Kubernetes. So I started a few years ago uh experimenting we did containerize all of these applications and run in different environment nomad docker compose and finally i started to use uh started to use kubernetes and because i was unhappy with the existing tools i started to create a new tool and what i would like to share is the experiences during these uh, years that what did i do and why it's not important that what the exact tool, but what I would like to share that what are the important factors. So first of all, this is the vision where it's not a very clear vision as I see because the, the resol resolution is not very good, but this is Apache Emberry. So this is a cluster manager tool, which was used by Hortonworks before the Hortonworks cloud that emerged. And since the merge, I think it's more and more abandoned. But this is the vision what I would like to to have something similar. You know, it's very, very simple to, to run Kubernetes or Spark, uh, run Kafka or Spark in the Kubernetes, right? We have operators, we have help chance. But what I'm interested about is running together, storage, streaming, processing, everything together. That's what I'm interested. So it's not so easy to run different operators and set up, for example, security or Kerberos in Ultra for all of them. So that's that's our, our, our vision. So let's start. First part, the borders. So you know that we know that we have some cloud native uh, area and some Apache big data, but similar to the borders, it's it's not very clear that what is between them. And I had a lot of uh, chat with different people and each of the people had different opinion about this one so this is the usual this is the more the most typical that we have some cloud native thingy apache big data and it's very interesting that there are only a few project which is into intersection we have a few operators for example uni we have unicorn for example which is a scheduler for both yarn and and kubernetes but we don't have a lot of projects there is another opinion that oh why do we talk 
how about this one? This is totally too different. It's it's non nonsense to to run Hadoop in Kubernetes. Why? That's also at an other class of answers. My opinion is something like this. So I think it's it's worse to 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 run Hadoop and, and other projects in Kubernetes, and that's what I would like to to share. But you know that it's it's hard to decide which one which one is the truth, right? But how can we do it? So let's check the two parts one by one. And let's start with the cloud native ecosystem. So this is from the from the I think it's a, a yearly report from 2019. And it shows the extreme popularity of, of Kubernetes and, and CNCF projects. It's just that I think it's that are contributing uh, companies. So it's not individuals, but it is the number of the companies. So it's it's a lot and it's a very big growth. And the question is that what is the secret? Why is it so why, why Kubernetes is so popular? And yeah, it, it, it's a very tricky question, right? Because if we would know, we can just start a new startup. But it's it's very hard to imagine, actually. So the Kubernetes, actually, it's a very well designed, but this is a developer-centric something, right? We have an API where we can just post YAML files. That's what we what we what we use. Just try to imagine that you are pitching to a, a, a VC that oh. I think it, it will be very, very popular. I have a API server and an etcd behind it, and and we can just post post any kind of flexible YAML files. So, what is the secret of the pop popularity? I don't think that there is a one single answer, but my answer is that the one secret is the collaboration, the collaboration between the the components. So, for example, if I annotate my Spark, Hadoop, HDFS, Yarn components with the right Kubernetes annotation, Prometheus just pull all of the metrics from them. Or I can choose from different log collection services. All of them are in the cloud, are somehow uh, adjusted adjusted to to be compatible with the with the kubernetes ecosystem so this is really the power of the collaboration i think this is a common platform if if i use the common platform there will be unlimited number of tools which way which i can use okay let's check the other side the apache big data so if i check the apache side it's also very popular right so it's actually it's very hard to imagine that if the left side is popular, the right side is popular, then why do we have so few projects in the intersection? So these are the number of uh, comments. I think it's also from the fiscal year, uh, the last uh, year yearly report. This is the number of uh, comments, and yeah, that was Apache. But inside of Apache, if we calculate the number of resolved issues, real resolved, not just Close with duplicate. We can see that um, these are the numbers of uh, resolved issues per project per year. And you can see that the top 10 are almost big, almost all of them are big data related. Yeah, the infra is not a real project, but I respect the work of, of, of the infra. So I just put it, I, I, I kept it here and maybe the camel is the only one which is not uh, directly related to the big data. So big data is very popular and we already have something like the collaboration, right? So we have the Hadoop compatible file system. Even the people who, who wrote the Hadoop is dead using the Hadoop compatible file system, the cloud connectors, S3A or, or Google cloud connectors for Spark, Flink, Ive, HBase for everything. Also, the Hadoop RPC and configuration itself are used by other other project in the projects in the ecosystem like HBase or, or or Hive. So it's there. We already have some level of collaboration in the in the Apache Big Data world, but this collaboration is slightly different because what is interesting is that it's very rare that I'm when I would like to use only one project, right? Kafka alone. No, no, usually I have Kafka, which um, stream the data to Spark or Flink or just save to HDFS or KSQL or something. So usually we need multiple Apache projects together. 
And this kind of collaboration, it's not so obvious. We have a few projects which try to address this. This I call it meta project, which just provides some services based on multiple Apache projects. So one is the Apache Ember, which is a cluster management. But um, after the Hortonworks Cloudera merge, Cloudera decided to use Cloudera Manager instead of Ember, which is closed source. Apache Big Top was another meta project, which provides testing and packaging for, for multiple big data projects. But it's not very typical to have to solve this problem, to, to provide something as a stack as an ecosystem. So this kind of collaboration seems to be, it's not missing, but it's not, not so typical. And my question is why, why it's not so typical? Again, it's hard to answer, right? But I have an answer. And I think the answer is our other friend, the usability, because it's hard. Understanding Hadoop is hard, all of the configuration hard, but we can learn that how it should be installed. But for the stack itself, you need to understand HDFS or Ozone or Spark, Flink, HBase, Hive, together, a lot of different components, different logic. So it's hard to provide something which can help to install Apache Big Data projects as a stack because of the complexity. Because it's hard to provide something which, which is usable enough. And my preconception is that maybe the Kubernetes as a platform can provide something which can, which can help us to achieve better usability. And better usability can help us to provide something uh, to, in, to install it together. So that was the theoretical part. So let's check some code thingy. Second part. When I started to do this uh, experiment, a few years ago, I started uh, first. I started to use Helm charts, but Helm is not. Uh, it is Kubernetes package man manager, but it's uh, invented to to install one stack. It's harder to achieve something where I have to ma manage multiple components. Like I would like to set that. Okay, I need. Secure from everything, a secure HDFS, a secure Yarn, a secure, secure Spark, secure everything. So Helm, this this uh, real collaboration is not very well supported. Helm. After that, I started to use the customize. This is um, not template based as Helm, but more like transformation based. And earlier, I started to create some transformation preprocessor for customize, but the problem was that the transformation was not reusable. What does it mean? I will see in a minute. And uh, so this preprocessor is just evolved to a separated tool, and which called flexible, because it's just a very flexible way to manage all of the Kubernetes files. So Kubernetes is nothing more, just a YAML game, right? I need a lot of YAML files. That's all what I need. And after that, I can just push it to the Kubernetes API, and I'm done. The question is that how can I create the right YAML files? Handchart just render, renders um, YAML files. And Customize also creates YAML files. So this is what I try to do, and I'm trying to show how does it work. Uh, OK, let's create a project. And this is my tool. This is flexible. But again, it's not a. It's not the tool which is important, but I would like to show that what kind of functionalities, functionalities are missing to provide some very good usability. So first of all, I would like to have some sources and search. So this is nothing more just a, a, a GitHub search and all of the repositories which are tagged with flexible are here. So I need flexible source and I need Hadoop. It, and obviously, I need Ozone. So let me add the Ozone as well. So let me check what kind of apps are here. So the two repositories are cloned to a cache directory. Hopefully, it's fast enough. And we will see the available projects or applications, which are somehow defined. We will see it, it, it later. So I can use HDFS, Yarn, Ozone. Oh, that sounds good. So let me uh, add, let's add, let's try to add Yarn. 
and HDFS. And I do a flexible generate. And what I have, a lot of YAML files. So these are pure Kubernetes YAML files. I can just deploy it with Q control apply, and I will have a HDFS and and uh, Yarn cluster. Oh, I added HDFS, not Ozone. Oh, my plan was just to add Ozone. Okay, I can show that this is the this is the descriptor. Very easy. So I can just fix to have Ozone, which is an object store instead of the HDFS. Uh, okay, and I can just regenerate. Okay, let me. So generate and I will have ozone and I can deploy it and I will have the interesting part is the transformations. So let me check the tree. What we can hear is that when I imported ozone from this repository, I got a few Kubernetes resources and they are somehow transformed. But the interesting part is the definitions. So these are reusable transformation. So for example, okay, let me first omit. I need a, a git ignore file because in the cache I have all of the sources. So I would like to commit the current state just to make it easier to compare different transformations. So initial version and it's committed. Okay, so I can Back to the flexible tree. So I have a reusable transformation. For example, this is a, a ozone mem disk. Let me check what is this. Flexible for info ozone mem disk. Okay, so I have some license. Use mem disk for empty directories. So the ozone usually, usually I wouldn't like to use mem disk, right? Because it's it's ephemeral but it can be used used for testing for example and you can see that this is you don't need to understand but this is something which is a path in the kubernetes yaml files and this is which will be added right the memory will be added so let me try to add it i'm editing the the resource file and i will say that okay i need a transformation transformations and ozone slash memdisk Right. I just activated for the ozone resources this predefined transformation and do a generate and do a git diff. And you can see that all oh, the stateful set itself somehow modified. I don't need to understand that what should I use to use memory disk, but it will be somehow just added. I can choose from existing transformation. Okay, I can omit this one. And let me sh share another example. Because the interesting part is the collaboration, right? So let me add an other type of transformation here. For example, Ozone, Ozone FS. So Ozone file system is a Hadoop compatible file system. So I would like to use that from, your jar, from, from Yarn, which means that I need some jar files in the Yarn containers, and I have to set the Hadoop class pass. But I have a reusable transformation, the Ozone file system, and I can just regenerate. Flexible generate. Oh, and you can see that all of the files, the yarn files, are modified. The Hadoop class plus environment variable has been set. We have a new mount, which is an empty deer. Here is the definition. So this is an empty deer, and this is shared between the yarn and the new init container. And the init container just copy the jar files. So there is a new play, new place where the jar file is copied, and it's usable from the yarn, and I can just use it. So without creating new Docker containers or anything, just with reusing a transformation which is provided by by the developers of the this Docker Ozone project. I can just pick one that okay, this is what I need, and I got it. So this is what uh, this is the hard part I think. This is the collaboration, right? This is this is what I didn't find in any other project. So the ozone files, the ozone somehow started to collaborate with the yarn without understanding 
I, I didn't need to understand all of the all of the details. So that's the flexible tool. There is a document. If you are interested, you can check on the GitHub. I used it a, a lot of times to test Ozone to deploy different type of uh, Terragen, HDFS, Ozone, Flink tool. But still, we are not at the end. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I really like it. I, so let's me back to this one. So demo is OK. After that, I started to create another project, this Docker GitHub IO, which, which nothing, nothing more, just the Docker images for all of the Hadoop and everything. And, and reusable, this, these transformations are added. Not for, so I have a lot of projects, not all the possible transformation, but a, a, a lot of transformation. I think I can even flow Docker. Yes, I can just. Yeah, this one. So I started to use it one, and you can see that I have a lot of uh, version, and, and this is basically what I did. I you can just add an uh, existing components, but I think we I it's a solution for the collaboration, right? That the Yarn and Ozone file system collaborated, but it's still not very usable. I need the knowledge that how can what should I, what transformation should be activated in a yarn to use on on file system? That's what I know, right? I just selected the right one. So still, it's not the, it's not the same usability as a cluster manager with, with UR. And before we go to there, we are just, uh, uh, okay, let's, let's talk about, uh, again, something. Okay, this is not theoretical, but this is a car. So this is my very first car. This is a, a Lada. Actually, I think it's a, it, uh, it was one of the most popular uh, car type in the e Eastern, Eastern Europe, Eastern Bloc and, and, and Russia. I'm from Eastern Europe and I got it from, from my parents for free, actually. And even my parents got it for free. And it was very popular because you know that that um, car from today or a Tesla, it's very hard to understand what's going on under the hood. Here, there was no secret. You can just open it, and this is a good old car. You can do whatever you want or whatever you would like to do. Just fix it very easily, cheap assembly parts. Only problem is that you need to understand more or less the basics of the cars. Unfortunately, I didn't understand that. I think it was 20 years old, so it was very typical that, it, that during a trip, it just yeah, the most important part was a phone inside a inside a car to get some help. That how can I fix it? Because something is wrong, broken. Some wheel was broken. Even I didn't know that. What are the names of the of the parts? So this is this is something like the Hadoop. If you understand the Hadoop, you can do whatever you want, right? You can tuning and it can handle any number of files. Okay, almost any number. So it's very powerful, but you need to understand what's going on. And unfortunately. I didn't understand fully, but I have another story about this one. So this is another one. This is a washing machine. So I worked in Switzerland, and that time my wife bought it for I think for five five bucks. So it's five Swiss, Swiss francs, which is uh, five dollars or something like this. And in Switzerland, it's very common that the washing machine and dryer is shared between between multiple flats in a in a common uh, room and one woman just moved from a flat where it was not shared to another one where it was shared so it was it uh, was not required anymore and it was almost free so i i went to home with, with this washing machine and at home i just checked that what is it and I checked the serial number, and I found that even if it was in Switzerland, it was an Australian, not Austrian, Australian uh, model. And I just got, oh, oh, it seems to be cheap, but if something is broken, I have to call a repairman from Australia. I have to pay for a, for an airplane ticket, or I don't know, how can I fix it, actually? So I checked the, the homepage of the vendor, and this is what I found. A very detailed manual that, or actually, this is the this is the collection of the of the spare parts. I can order any of these, and this is way better than my car, right? I don't need to understand what's going on. If something is broken, 
I can just order a new one and I can try to, to replace it. Right? I can replace the motor, I can replace the, the door, I can replace everything. And I don't need a full understanding of what's going on. I can just see if something is, is, is black or, or broken, I can just replace it, which is way better for me because it, it will work. So it was finally, it seems to be a, a good deal. And actually it, it's, uh, it's working very well since that. And when we are talking about the, the configuration or, or customization level, it's very clear that we always need something where we can modify any of the configurations in case of emergency. But the interesting level is that what kind of other levels can be provided? Usually we have a very high level. This is that give me a secure HDFS and Kafka. I wouldn't like to know how do you do it. Just give me it right now. This is the, the abstraction level of the cloud providers, right? Click the button, give me Kafka. That's what I need. And usually there is a, a low level button. That's the, the car level or, or ladder level. Then when you know the exact configuration and you would like to just modify it uh, and, and scale it. But I think there is something between them. And, and this is very similar to the previous two, right? When I just shared a transformation. Do you need a um, memdisk, for example, or a different persistence? Or do you need to expose all of the ports? Um, you can just choose from available options. I need, I think we need all of the abstraction levels. And this is the key for, for the usability to, to provide. So let's go back to the very, very first, uh, first point the cluster management. That was the vision, right? Which is still not very clear, but this is still an Amori and the head of cluster manager. And in the left side, you can see that it's HDFS, MapReduce, Yarn, Tez, Hive, HBase, Big Zookeeper, and oh, Amberry Metrics maybe, are installed in this cluster together. So this is something what I we would like to provide. And we already have a low-level tool, which can just share re reusable transformation, uh, so which can be useful for achieve both the collaboration and the usability, but still we are not there. So a few weeks ago, we had a hackathon inside my, my uh, company. So everybody, it, it, it was totally free to do something. And we had two, two and a half days to, to create something new. And with my colleague, one of my colleagues, we just sit down and we thought, that, okay, maybe we can do something like this. Because if it's true that the Kubernetes can help us uh, and we can just reuse all of the existing components, then maybe it's possible to, to provide something like this just in two and a half days. And we tried it and I can show that what do we have. It's not a full application. So the previous one, the, the resource generator, it's a, it's, a, it's a stable application and I use it every day. This is more like a, a demo to understand that it might be, we, it might be required to, to provide uh, something for the Apache Big Data ecosystem in cloud, 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 uh, Kubernetes. So let's back to here. And this one, what we did. It's nothing more, just a few hundred lines of Go code and HTML code, very minimal. It's two days and, and something like this. But, and you can see that I have some components, so it's very sim, okay, not very similar to the Emberry, but to something like this. First, what we can see for example, the nodes. What we can see here is nothing more, just Kubernetes API calls, but here, the collaboration part. If I click to the dashboard and if it works, I'm going to Grafana, right? So this is this is all of the information about my node. So you see nothing more, just the Prometheus and the Grafana in the background, and it can just, you know, it's very common that Grafana can be set up to monitor everything inside. So we can also go to the current status. I have HDFS Yarn Zookeeper. You can see that I have some services, HDFS, Again, this locks and HDFS net node. This is uh, Grafana and Loki. All of the locks are collected here. Okay, it's not 
I think I didn't run any specific workloads, so I couldn't see too much. This is the console. This is nothing more Kubernetes dashboard, but I can just go to the HDFS so I can do anything here, especially if I have default FS. I have no default FS. Okay. So this is the collaboration part, right? With the collaboration that with all of the existing cloud native tools, I can provide a very good user experience. Okay. I wouldn't like to talk about the UI. You know that this is a, I'm not a UI man, but you know that the functionality, it's very easy to, to provide all of this, but still something what we need this, uh, the abstraction level. So let's go back to here. I would like to install a new service, obviously an ozone one, right? And we definitely need an ozone service. So let's try to add an ozone service and let's see what happens. Ideally, an ozone service, oh, ozone services I did. Still not installed, just add it to the, to the party. I have two options, apply the changes or configure the service. Let's check the apply the changes. So under the hood, I have the Git repository and everything what we have seen earlier, this magic generation happens. So if I under, if I am interested about what happened with this adding ozone, if my VPN would like to show it, the all of the all of the diffs between. Oh, I have. You can see that I had a lot of new uh, stateful sets. So ozone actually is added to the party. This is the descriptor what we have seen earlier. So you can see that I just added the ozone as before. Okay, still it's not applied, right? I have this one here, so I need to apply it to commit to the cluster. But okay, I have a few minutes still. But what I can do, it's more interesting. So let's go back to this uh, ozone and plain services, nothing important. Okay, configuring. So these are reasonable. So this is the, the level, abstraction level of the washing machine, right? Let's say I would like to enable service on all nodes, which under the hood is just a node port service, and I can choose it. So under the hood again, it will add the to the descriptor, so I can just check what happened. Okay, a new commit, add new publish stateful set to the service ozone. Okay, check what does it mean. And you can see that, okay, I have a new few new services, which will expose with this kind of node port all of the ozone services. I don't need to understand that how should I do it, right? I can just choose from the existing. If I would like to do, I can, I can configure everything one by one. So if I go to the HDFS, I have all of this config here. You can see that core side HDFS. I can modify any of this, but I don't need to understand. And it's something lower level than the, what I can found in the cloud providers. Okay, let's see another example. So this is the versions, again, collaboration. This is nothing more just a Docker registry under the hood. And in a Docker registry, I ask that what kind of images are there? And I can say that, okay, I would like to use the 1.1, 1.0.0. And you know that this other transformation package somehow added to, to the Ozone installation. So let's check what does it mean. It means a new transformation. I don't need to understand. I'm just uh, showing that what, what's under the hood. And you can see that the image itself, it's modified to download this specific image from the internal Docker registry. Again, I almost, it's almost nothing, a few lines of code, five lines, lines of code, but I just integrated the existing Docker registry with, with all of those things. So finally, I can say that apply the changes is nothing more just a, a push. So when I push this one to the Git repository, I have this deployment. And not a big surprise, I just reused something, which is a um, Git ops based uh, tool, which is nothing more just synchronizing a Git repository with my Kubernetes. So all of the YAML files in the Git repositories will be synchronized. I can revert here. I can check the status, but everything is green. So everything is supposed to available. If I check the current status, yes, I have the ozone six running services. I can just check it. 
because I enable the note port, I can just check the S3JG, for example, or SCM public, maybe. S S S maybe this one. Yes, this is the S3 compatible interface of Ozon. So I'm just clicking, and but under the hood, it's very easy to understand, and there is no state. You can just move everything from, from one environment to another one, right? It's nothing more, just a Git repository. This is just a helper to understand the big data projects, because under the hood, we have just the flexible project which generates all of the YAML files. Okay, so this is some kind of vision, what I have, so where we have a middle level obstruction to understand what we have and reuse transformation to provide a, a, some experience, a usability for the stack itself, for the Apache Big Data as a stack and a few other components, CNCF projects, Prometheus, Sloki, a lot of things can be, can, can be added. So let's just go back and close the presentation. This is, yes. Yeah, so summary is that I think what we need to make it easier to use all of these tools, it's not separated ham charts or operators, but something which is common and can provide some good usability. I think the key for the good usability is this reusable transformation. I also think that the, the Kubernetes can be a very good platform because it's so flexible on top of it very easy two days and we can just provide something. It's very easy to create something. And the next step is, a, is an open question. One option, if, if at least a few people are interested about this approach, we can try to create an incubator proposal or we can just do more prototypes or experiments. Everything is open. So if you are interested, feel free to ping me here or here. Oh. I didn't mention that if you are interested about the ozone, then there is a YouTube channel where, where you can also have information. So that's what I I planned to share. And still we have, oh, I think three minutes. So if you have any questions, actually we have unlimited time, right? Because this is the last presentation, one of the last presentations in the conference. So feel free to ask if you have any questions, comments, or, or feel free to contact me if you have no questions. Oh yes, Burst of Feather session. It's very important. Go to Burst of Feather session. It's always, always uh, four hours. Yes. I know somebody who participated, who followed the presentation from Japan, actually, and I really respect him. Okay, if there is no other question, thank you to participate and join to this talk. Thank you to join to this conference. And thank you.